So what is serialization? Um, and let's just look at the Wikipedia definition. It's actually pretty good. Uh, so what Wikipedia says is that in computing, some sort of name ambiguity here, serialization in US spelling, is the process of transmitting a data structure or object state, and that's really what we're focusing on here, object state, into a format that can be stored or transmitted and then reconstructed later. And specifically, our goal today is going to be to serialize into a string. So a string, a sequence of characters, is a very, very canonical representation that's understood by everybody. Every computer language has the notion of a string. So if I convert something to a string, I at least give the other program that's going to try to um, deserialize that a starting point. Um, and so it says when the resulting series of bits or characters is rewrite according to the serialization format, so again, we need to have an agreement about how we're going to do things. It can be used to create a semantically identical clone of the original object. For many complex objects, for those that make a sense of use of references, which we now know of, the process is not straightforward. Serialization of object-oriented objects does not include any of their associated methods. So this is really just about state. Remember, objects bring together state and behavior, data structures and algorithms, uh, you know, variables and methods. Serialization is only going to focus on the method, um, sorry, only focus on the field, the field values. The methods don't get serialized and actually to show that in certain cases that can actually be pretty useful. So essentially the process here, uh, and then the inverse process is deserialization. So serialization is taking an object and converting it into some agreed upon format that's in a simpler form, right? So a series of bytes or a series of characters, in this case a string. Then I can send that somewhere else or to some other program and it can take that information and deserialize it to reconstruct some sort of equivalent uh, object that it can then potentially do some work on. Um, so this is one of these incredibly important concepts in computer science because it connects things. It is the point of connection between two different things. So, you know, there are many different programming languages out there and one of the core ways in which they interoperate with each other or communicate with each other is through serialization. So I want to send some data to some other program written in some other language. What we do is we agree on the format, the serialization format, and then when I need to send it some information, I take that object state and I serialize it, and then I send it to it over the internet or in some other way, and it takes that and it deserializes it and so what I'm, I might have started off with the Java object and the receiver might deserialize it into a Python object, do some work on it, and then send me back a response, also serialized, that started off as a Python object, gets converted to a string, and then gets deserialized back into a Java object. And I can do that between Java and JavaScript, Python, Go, you know, C, C++, whatever. Every major library has library, sorry, every major programming language has libraries for doing this. So today we're going to look at the process of doing this for just some example classes using a library. But the goal here is, is, is really quite simple. This is sort of a lingua franca or a common language that all these computers can, can speak. So the programming languages themselves are very different. How things are represented internally in the computer's memory is very different. But by agreeing on a serialization format, it allows two potentially very different computer programs that are structured differently, written in different languages, have very different internal representations to exchange information with each other and be able to cooperate in order to get useful work done.